going on everybody it's intense throws and in this video i'll be doing a top 10 ranked coasters at six flags great adventure and i talked about all these coasters a lot but what i haven't done is put them into one video all together so i'll be doing that today and i'll just you know do my top 10 ranked coasters and this been a video that all you guys wanted to see so i'm here bringing it today and I hope you guys enjoy this top 10 video. So, as further ado, let's jump straight into the video. At number 10, we have Runaway Mine Train. And comparing it to the coasters above it, it doesn't really compare. And comparing it also, the intensity doesn't compare either. And it's actually a good ride. And if you rode Runaway Mine Train and heard people talk about Runaway Mine Train, you probably heard about this one moment that's surprising. And it's the Ejector Hill that moment is absolutely insane like you get thrown out of your seat and it's so surprising and honestly in my opinion i think runaway mind train has the strongest airtime in the park like that ejector hill is no joke like you literally get yeeted out of your seat and yeah it's just a great ride and it's a little janky but it's not as bad it's an okay ride and i think top 10 it's a good spot for it, and it lands at number 10, so I think this is really good for it. So at number 10, we have Runaway Mind Train. Coming in at number 9, we have Superman Ultimate Flight. Now, this is really low because, in my opinion, it's not one of my favorites, and it's an okay experience. The elements are pretty decent. The pretzel loop is really good, giving some great forces, and it's just insane and intense every single time I get on Superman. The end line twist is pretty pretty good too it catches me on guard right with the pretzel loop and yeah it's just an okay ride night rides are good on it and gps absolutely love this coaster and it's not wrong with that i definitely can see why people like superman it's just not a coaster that i will go to off the bat once i get in the park or like probably like during my trip i probably ride it once during my trip but it's not a coaster that I would try to go to right as soon as I get in the park. And yeah, so at number nine, we have Superman Ultimate Flight. At number eight, we have Joker. I like Joker and I like 40 free spins. I just like how you don't know what experience you're about to get or how many spins you're about to get. It just builds up the anticipation and just builds up for you to wait and see of what experience you're about to get. I ran a Joker, and I always get a max of, like, one or two spins, and I've been riding Joker a lot recently, and I am I got, like, four spins in a row one time, and I was just shocked. I was like, wait, what? And I was just left shocked, and Joker is definitely overlooked, and it's absolutely really fun. Like, Joker is really fun, and it's definitely a coaster I would always laugh like laugh on and you know just have fun on it's just a fun coaster to get on and i'll definitely give it a ride here and there but it just doesn't stack with the other coasters above it in the intensity part joker is kind of intense and um but it just doesn't build up with the intensity with the coasters above it but it's still really fun so definitely give it a ride here and there Coming in at number seven, we have Batman the Ride. This B&M invert plays absolutely no joke. The force that this thing pulls is insane, and the intensity in the whip on it is absolutely amazing. And it's a little bit lower because it's short, but that doesn't necessarily mean much. Batman is still absolutely an amazing coaster with still being a short ride. And I was surprised myself. And it's just so good. And it's so intense and absolutely amazing. I, I absolutely always have to ride Batman at least two or three times. It's just that good. Like, I absolutely love this invert. So intense. Forces are amazing. The whip is amazing. And the force is just, just literally good. So at number seven, we have Batman to ride. Coming in at number six, we have Medusa. Medusa packs in a great punch for being a very long ride. This and Batman can go vice versa 
any day of the week. And for this, I put Medusa above Batman because it's a longer ride. And Medusa just packs a punch. Like, it packs in some great forces, amazing whip. And it just, it, it's just a long ride. And my favorite element on the ride, the zero G roll. That thing just, it's so good. Literally whippy. The loop is good. The dive loop into the fire effect. The cobra roll, so good. Like, element, the, like, the blending of the elements on this ride are so good. And the corkscrews, too, are really good and forceful. Like, the, like, the blending of the elements on this ride are so good. And absolutely love Medusa. This ride is great. It, it, it just puts in whatever, you, like, you like in a ride. You got forces. You got whip. You know, it's it's just great. And it's a long ride. So, that's why Medusa's at number six. Jumping our way into the top five, we'll be starting off with Nitro. Nitro is really good. And, um, yeah, it has its on and off days. But, honestly, still, it's pretty good. And the airtime is good. And... But my favorite thing about Nitro is that upwards helix. When I rode Nitro in 90 to 100 degree weather, when I tell you I blacked out on the helix, I blacked out on the helix. Nitro was running good, and you know when Nitro was running good. And I just knew Nitro was running good. And in that 90 to 100 degree weather and Nitro running good, I, I was, I just knew. I just knew. And I blacked out on the helix. And the the airtime was just good that day for Nitro. But an underrated moment that nobody really talks about is the finale. The finale is underrated. The back-to-back -back floater moments are so good. And, like, the bunny hills are really good. It's just back-to-back -back floater. It gives an awesome feeling. And, like, it's just a great moment. And the drop off the mid course literally catches me off guard every single time, and it's just a great finale, and a underrated finale and a great finale, and that's why Nitro earns a spot at top five. Earning the spot at number four and being my favorite B and M in the park, we have Green Lantern. Yes, Green Lantern. This ride is actually underrated, overheated. And the reputation for this ride is bad, and I feel like it doesn't deserve that reputation, and it doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. Because, like, the intensity this ride delivers is amazing. The forces this ride, the forces this ride pulls are good. And the overall package of this ride is good. It's smooth, and I had no problem with this ride at all. Like, the ride was just good. And, like... I marathoned Green Lantern 51 times, and I can tell you all the rides were good. There was three okay rides that I got, but they still were good. And 48 of the rides were perfect. Like, it was just good. No headbanging all day on the marathon. This ride was just perfect. And it, it just doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. The, like, the, the forces, dude. The forces is insane on this ride. And, you know, the airtime in the mid course and the drop off the mid course is good. And, you know, the incline loop. That, the incline loop is no joke. The forces that incline loop pulls is absolutely insane. And I don't know how I did Green Lantern 51 times with the incline loop being that intense, but I did it. That incline loop is absolutely no joke. So earning a spot at number four, we got Green Lantern. Moving into my top three favorites in the park, earning a spot at number three, we have the King of Coasters, the one and only King Da Ka. And you're probably like, but the ride experience is short. But what this ride delivers in a short amount of time is absolutely amazing. That 128 mile per hour launch in 3.5 seconds is literally everything. It's an amazing start to a coaster, and the adrenaline pump is just absolutely amazing. The intensity, the fun you get out of it is just everything. And 
it, it just that launch catches me off guard every single visit and it always takes me a few rides to get used to that launch because it just honestly catches me off guard every single like time and the top hat amazing giving some great views before hitting that spiral drop also the spiral drop being very good the speed hill giving great sense of speed it, this ride just packs a punch for a short amount of time and it's amazing and yeah i'm glad we have this accelerated coaster in our park king naka is absolutely amazing and it definitely deserves its spot at number three so at number three we have king naka so jumping in at number two we have jersey devil and i had mixed opinions about this ride during its opening and until now I got my first ride during Pass Holder Previews, and the Pass Holder Previews, this ride was running slow, but I still liked it. Many others hated it, and my favorite part when it was running slow was actually the stall, and because the hang time you get on the stall was absolutely amazing and, like, when it was running slow, and um, people just trashed this ride when it was running slow. Everybody hated it. All of a sudden, in 2022, this thing got warmed up and it turned into a beast. And this, and Jersey Devil caught everybody's attention. And it just was a, a coaster that was talked about a lot more now. And a lot more people are starting to like this coaster and starting to gain interest in riding Jersey Devil. And a lot of more people are starting to like it. And Jersey Devil, I always liked it since the beginning when I first got my ride and pass all the previews. Such a great addition to Six Flags. I'm great we have our RMC wrapped at the park. And yeah, this ride is absolutely amazing. Great coaster. So at number two, we have Jersey Devil. So at number one, Conquering being my favorite in the park, we have no other than El Toro. An absolute beast, absolute beast of a wooden coaster. And this thing just has a starting that never gets old. From the drop, having some sustained ejector into the first comeback, giving him some sustained ejector, getting yeeted out of your seat, hitting another camelback, getting more sustained ejector, getting yeeted out of your seat again. This starting is just absolutely amazing, and it never gets old. And I just miss this starting a lot. I miss this whole ride experience a lot. Can't wait to get back in 2023. And... Yeah, El Toro is my favorite at Six Flags Great Adventure. So that's going to do it for this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this long video of my top 10 coasters at Six Flags Great Adventure. And I'm curious, what is your top 10 at Six Flags Great Adventure? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm definitely curious to see what your guys' rankings are. And yeah, as I, as I always say, as always, stay intense.